want to welcome you to worship today at God's house, September 11th of 2022. We are glad that you are with us. Uh, today we will be serving communion, so if you've not already gotten your communion elements, if you would pause your video and go and get those and then resume, uh, you can join with us in celebrating and sharing in the table. Our call to worship is Psalm 14. Fools say in their heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable things. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on mankind and sees if there is any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are all like perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge? All the evildoers who eat my people as they eat bread do not call upon the Lord. There they shall be in great terror. For God is with the company of the righteous. You will confound the plans to the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that deliverance of Israel will come from Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Jacob will rejoice, Israel will be glad. Amen. Our praise hymn this morning is, How Our Hearts With Joy Abound. <laughs> Let us join together in prayer. Holy God, living Jesus and loving Spirit, we ask that you would sanctify our worship and praises to you. Come to us with joy, celebrations, and thanksgivings. Speak to us words of life and healing. Empower us for the work you have given us to do. God of all life, for this day of hope, we do give you thanks. For your power to overcome evil and death, we praise you. For the grace and mercy of your love, we are grateful. For we know our weaknesses, our failures, our busyness, our self-justifications and selfish interests, and our comparisons that demean and exclude others. Lord, have mercy on us. Loving God, we pray that you tend and comfort all who grieve and those who suffer injustices. Open our mouths to speak your good news. Make our feet swift to be messengers of hope and healing. Healing Spirit, in this world of violence and hate, divisions and exploitations, we pray for peace and reconciliation. We know that these come through love, compassion, and humility. 
Give us hearts of generosity toward one another to believe that change is possible, beginning with us. Open our hearts to being filled with your love. In our times today, we struggle with faith in a culture of fear and a language that's divisive and judgmental. Give us a vision of hope and hearts full of courage to follow Jesus faithfully and be transformed ourselves. Come, Holy Spirit, upon us and raise up new leaders who walk in your ways of truth and righteousness. O God of justice with mercy, help us to be this change. Living Jesus, show us your way of love in our relationships with one another as we pray for one another. In our joys and celebrations and in sickness, grief, suffering, hardships, and all the uncertainties of this life. Lord, hear our prayers and show your compassion through us. Lord of hosts in heaven and on earth, we pray for the coming of your realm of peace in all creation. Make us instruments of your peace Send us your servants to bear and be this peace in all times and places until you come again. Amen. Our reading from the Hebrew Scriptures is Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, and 22 through 28. At that time, it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a hot wind comes from me out of the bare heights in the desert toward the daughter of my people, not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak in judgment against them. For my people are foolish, they do not know me. They are stupid children, they have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth, and it was complete chaos, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. Because of this, the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above grow black. For I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. Our epistle reading today comes from 1 Timothy 1, 5-7. 12 through 17. But the aim of such instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. Some people have deviated from these and turned to meaningless talk, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make assumptions. <clears throat> I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he considered me faithful and appointed me to his service even though I was formerly a blasphemer a persecutor and a man of violence but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I receive mercy so that in me, 
as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience as an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the kings of the ages, immortal, visible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. We here at God's house encourage you to be a blessing, be a blessing with your time, be a blessing with your faith, be a blessing with your compassion, be a blessing with your love, be a blessing with your giving, be a blessing by cooking someone a meal, be a blessing by walking someone's pet, but most of all, be a blessing to all those who are the children of God. Be a blessing and share your love. Our next hymn is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. reading today is Luke 15, 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, which one of you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he is found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Mm -hmm. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. God, as we gather to worship you, to bring our praises and our prayers, we come seeking to hear your word. 
your hope, and your love. Now may the Spirit touch and speak in each of our hearts and minds. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. As I think about these parables of lost things and read about the craziness in human relationships that Jeremiah is talking about, I have to ask, have we humans lost our minds? <laughs> How is it that we do not see what we are doing to one another and to the world around us in our selfishness? Today, 9-11 is an anniversary of terrorism created by ideologies and conflicts. And today, in another area of our world, a war rages over land and power, and the tyrant who initiated has no sense of diplomatic mutual respect and accountability in our interconnected world. Hunger, diseases, houselessness, immigrants fleeing violence, and economic exploitation are everywhere. And no one takes responsibility, while too few show any compassion. As Christians, we are caught between two worlds, the ways of love and the greed of our own desires. And they're very different logics and principles for how we relate. And sometimes we too get sucked up into these worldly ways until God hits us with a two by four like <laughs> Jeremiah. A prophetic word jerks us up short or a relationship begins to matter more than just being right. But we get humiliated because we won't be humble. It's like Paul on the road to Damascus, a time which he now views it's among his greatest sins. His intention was the murder of Christians. His self-righteous indignation at their faith in Jesus was just wrong in his eyes. His misunderstanding of God's love and words of grace and the prophecies about the Messiah were multiple. Such can be the sins of even those who think they are serving God. I feel for conservative Baptists and other conservatives who are having to face sexual abuses and misogyny charges. They do not have a strong basis of theology in reconciliation or mutual love to heal that fall that they are experiencing from their towers of lust, male ego, and pride. This same kind of thinking goes on in classism, homophobia, racism, in greed and power seeking, in colonialism, <clears throat> and ecological destruction. Yeah. Albert Einstein once said, you cannot use the same logic to solve a problem that created it. <laughs> it's so easy to fall back into the same thinking that produces all of these relational problems that we have in our dualistic logic of comparisons and competition when we try to solve them and heal the wounds. It just doesn't work. Any form of thinking that is premised on us and them divisions falls into that fallacy of comparisons and competitions instead of our unity and community. I don't know of anyone who doesn't know what I have experienced, and that's the discomfort of admitting being wrong. Mm -hmm. Of having made mistakes is an easier way of saying it, a softer way of saying it. But it's hard to face the harms we have done to others, accidentally or intentionally. It's hard to find the courage to apologize and make amends. You see, we want to think better of ourselves. And don't you hear it? The language just shifted to better or worse, good or bad. That quickly, our limbic logic sneaks back into the conversation. It's about saving face, personally not compassion for the wounded. It's about judging others and not seeking solution for everyone. It's about what it will cost us to change our ways. And we're not so sure we want to do it. How often this thinking train wrecks our efforts to heal and reconcile. Someone could come in into a process, anywhere in that process, and divert it from its restorative purpose back into the judgmental and retributive logic again. And this triggers our fears, which is even worse. Mm -hmm. 
Hear the worst part? We cannot get out of it even in our language. You see, it takes principled commitment to persevere in love and not let the flames of fear or hate, vengeance or pride, take hold in us to undermine the process of healing and reconciliation. It's like the bind that I feel in the preaching text that we read today and have read over the last few weeks. Between the world's way of exploiting and abusing others and the path of love that God has for us and has put in us as a potential, have we lost our human minds? Yeah. <laughs> now, I promise you I'm not jumping subjects, but I want to talk. September is also recovery month. And recovery is about a transformation in our spirituality. It's not a religious program in its original form. It's ability to move past those old thinking patterns of self-interest and pleasure-seeking or fear-based trauma responses mm -hmm. to a new way of relating and living life based on spiritual principles. Letting go of the structures of religion which get bound up in rules and authoritarian laws means that we are then free to assume responsibility for our own words and actions. It means we have to find a new moral compass and know the principles on which we make our decisions in life. When Jesus talks about following the letter of the law but not understanding its principles in the letter to uh, in his talks and also Paul in the letter to Timothy. It's exactly this that is being confronted. Doing the motions, but not understanding the principles. You see, as human beings, we go through a time of learning values and principles as a part of normal human development. We learn in early life by comparisons. That's how our brain works. <clears throat> the lim <clears throat> limbic part of our brain develops earlier than our neocortex. But around the age of 11 or 12, our neocortex kicks into gear and starts to develop faster. We become less literal in our understanding of things. And we learn to accept paradoxes of truth. It's not either or anymore. It can be both and. Another way to describe this mental development is as infants, we drink water and breathe the air because they satisfy our thirst and keep us alive. We do not have to understand how they work, and we won't until we get a good bit of education. And even then, some of us are not scientists to understand all of the chemistry. But our human spiritual growth is normal, just like our intellectual and emotional growth. Our moral development is normal. It's a part of our relational growth. When God speaks of being, people being like children, it's not always a compliment. Children are supposed to grow up, to become mature, adult children of God. Paul uses this image in his words to the Corinthians who are behaving like children at the time that he writes them. Addictive thinking and behaviors, not just substance use disorder, but any addiction, to things, to sex, to money, to power and social status, to risk taking or gambling, to anything that we find pleasurable or desirable. This kind of thinking robs us of our capacity to use our whole human brain. Mm -hmm. The neocortex part that loves and can show compassion, the part that recognizes our interdependence and need for mutual respect and collaboration instead of operating on a competitive model. Mm -hmm. You see, most, and arguably all, of the chaos of active addictions is relational breakdown hmm. and harms done to people. And it's caused by the loss of or having never discovered our distinctively human neocortex part of our brain. <laughs> Today, many are discovering that recovery programs are a path to a spiritual awakening of our human capacity and development of our neocortex to live not by the limbic or reptilian ways of thinking. And it's a shame that the church itself does not recognize its own blindness to how this, its theologies are often rooted in dualistic thinking, illusions of power and control, 
just like what Paul followed before his conversion. The prophets again and again called God's people out on this. It's so easy to stray back into divisive relational patterns in which we quickly and literally lose our minds. <laughs> Yet God continues to call us back mm -hmm. to faith and love instead of blithely going on not caring about what we have lost. Mm -hmm. The mind of love that God gave us at the beginning Susie was browsing in YouTube videos the other day and ran across one that gives us sort of an insight on this. People say that thinking of the Titanic, Titanic was a total disaster. But the makers of the YouTube said, well, what about the lobsters in the tank, the live oh. tank? For them, it was freedom. We had become so accustomed to thinking only in terms of our own interests, our own mm. perspective, that we cannot see or understand the interests of others, mm. much less the interests and purposes of God. Mm. We need to recover this mind that we have lost when we turn to thinking in terms of good and evil back in Genesis 3, right and wrong, and the false illusions of control that have taken over us. Mm -hmm. The joy that Jesus is describing in these parables of lost things is this transformative experience of finding our lost binds again. At first glance, we were talking about this before church. We may wonder about leaving the 99 alone to go search for the one that is lost. Hmm. Yes, we still have the 99. Gosh, that's a lot. But have you ever tried to write a computer program? You know that if you leave out one step, it will not work. Our brains and our relationships are interconnected. If one part is not working, the rest is likely to be messed up. Amen. But we think we're just fine going along with our limbic thinking, and we don't know what we're missing. And then we wonder where all the chaos came from. Mm -hmm. The woman searching for the one lost coin knows it matters very much to find it. It's not just about sentiment or a marriage thing or something like that. It's a matter of stewardship of what God had given her. Mm -hmm. To begin the spiritual search for our lost minds, that part of our thinking that operates on love and compassion is not a silly whim or an unimportant quest. It's the very thing that God looks for in all of God's children who are expected to grow into maturity and faith. Mm -hmm. The time for living and relating like children is past. And when we find our whole mind and when we're able to recognize and use love and compassion in our human relationships, we are able to hear the prophetic words against the ways of this world differently. It may be doom and disaster for others, but it's freedom for us. We recognize that we are living with our feet in two worlds, one which is fallen and full of sins against God and others, and the other is principled in the character of God, the image of God that's in us, love. Paul is deeply grateful for the grace of God that hit him like a bolt of lightning to get his attention and give him another chance in love and mercy. So he has let go of all that he once thought important and worthy in order to pursue this treasure of faith in Jesus. Those who realize that they have lost something of immense value rejoice greatly when they find it again. Mm -hmm. It's the joy of healing broken relationships as we awaken to our human spirituality which makes us different from other creatures. This is not as in better than them, for we are all still part of an interdependent ecological system. Mm -hmm. But it's the restoration of loving relationships. When we find the part of our mind that we have lost on that fateful day in Genesis, when we taste it of comparative thinking, when we find our lost humanity, we begin to develop our lost capacity for love and compassion. God is persistent and faithful in all creation. And as with Paul, God calls us to awaken spiritually to the power of love in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Though it seems like this world is going to hell in a handbasket, there is still the image of God stamped in our bodies, wired in our brains, that God seeks to awaken and develop in us. The psalmist says in another psalm, Awake, O sleepers! Get up and search for your human mind and all that it means for your life. Mm 
Hmm. Examine your thinking and your ways of relating. Do not be like the beasts of prey and predator. God is calling us to mutual and loving relationships and interdependence and mutual respect. Let us search diligently to find this mind that is also in Christ, in which we find hope and life. When we find our neocortex thinking, rejoice in the grace and love that the Spirit teaches us. Rejoice in all the love and compassion in life through God's mercy and faithfulness. Rejoice in the abiding presence of Jesus with us, who has redeemed us from all this chaos and harm in the world. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response is... God of grace and God of glory. and even the power of death. He instructed us to share in it in the unity of the Spirit with love for one another as he has loved us. So let us join together in the prayer which he taught his disciples to pray, saying together, Our loving parent who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This table proclaims the accomplishment of God's redemptive love. As you have confessed your sins and turned to the grace of God in Jesus Christ, they are forgiven. God is with you. And also, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift our hearts to God. God. Let us give thanks to God. It, it is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. 
Yes, O oh God, you created all that is with your word, and your love calls all creation to unite to bring forth life and glorify you. We look to the word that became flesh for our redemption and reconciliation through your grace. Your love is for all who turn to you in faith and hope. We give you thanks for this love that comes to us to give us healing and new life in Jesus Christ. We listen for your spirit to speak, to guide, to help and to strengthen us in faith until all of your purposes are fulfilled and established forever in glory. We join the hosts of heaven and all creation in praising and glorifying you as a creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all life, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to those who were with him and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after the dinner, he took the cup and giving thanks for it, He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. Let us pray. God of hosts, creator of the universe, you have given us the grain of the field and the fruit of the vine to sustain our bodies. Jesus took these elements and set them apart for this sacred and holy sacrament to sustain our spirits in community. Bless them as holy and set them apart for this sacred use as each of us understands your grace and love for us. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Come, take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the love of Jesus poured out for you. Come, share together in the unity of the Spirit at this table of God's love for us and for all people in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God of power and grace, we give thanks to you for life and your power to heal and sustain our lives. We give you thanks for the love you show us in Jesus. We give you thanks for your presence with us always in your spirit and its reconciling work uniting us in love. We give you thanks for this table and this community that nurtures and enriches us by the diversities we share at it. We give you thanks for this witness to the resurrection and its power to turn us toward you in trust that no matter what may happen in life, we are forever safe in your care. Amen. Amen. Live as mature children of the light and walk together in unity as God's beloved people in the love of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God has been poured out upon you. It will strengthen and sustain you, guide you, and keep you until Christ comes again in glory. God is with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Amen. Amen. Amen.